Hello there, old and new friends. It's your friendly neighborhood, Sunshine Squirrel. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I know that as the summer is starting to wind down, there's a lot of you out there that are going to be starting veterinary school. And then there are some of you that are going to be returning. So congratulations to all of you new attendees that are gonna be starting school very soon. And then welcome back to all of you that are gonna be returning to the classroom. Now I know for myself, when I think about my time in veterinary school, I had some really great memories, but it also definitely was a challenging time, probably the hardest time in my life. <laughs> and when I think about just different things that happened and different things that I could have done better, um, or things that maybe I did that were good things and that helped me, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of some advice on different techniques and different lessons that I learned of things that you should or shouldn't do while you're in veterinary school. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So my first piece of advice for you guys is number one, don't overcommit yourself. As you get further along in your veterinary school career, um, there's going to be the opportunity to be involved in different clubs, different organizations, um, different activities. Um, there's even the opportunity, depending upon where you go to school, to be involved and even, let's say, um, student leadership and government and even being involved in let's say tours and interviews and things like that. It's really important that you determine what you can and what you cannot handle. When I was in veterinary school, I was involved in so many clubs, I was involved in the admissions team and to be honest, I kind of spread myself pretty thin and it led to me feeling a little bit stressed because I had my academics and then I had my personal life and then I also had all these different activities that I was also involved in. So it's really important to maybe pick one or two clubs or organizations that you're really passionate about and that you really want to be involved in. And then kind of, you can attend the other events, you know? Um, I know where I went to school, we had quite a lot of student dif different student organizations, uh, but you could absolutely be a part of a student club, student organization, without being one of the leaders or without being one of the core members of that team. So definitely make sure to pick those different clubs and organizations that you want to be a part of, but keep in mind you don't have to be um, committed to all of them all the time. Now the next piece of advice I would give is to make time for friends and family. This is something that I would say I didn't do super well with when I was in veterinary school. I was really, really focused on academics, really, really focused on doing well, and it's probably that type A perfectionist part of my personality, but it made me put friends and family and really important people in my life kind of on the back burner and not give them the attention and time that they deserved. Remember that a lot of times these are the people that even helped you to get to where you are. Don't forget about them, don't neglect friendships, don't neglect your family absolutely it may mean that you know versus from college to veterinary school you may not have time to you know let's say go out to eat with your friends every night and things like that but it's really important to take time to still work on your friendships make new friends with your new classmates have bonding times with them and then also remember to spend some time with your family and then your friends from back home or from your undergrad school as well the next piece of advice I would give you guys is to learn how you learn best. Now, I would honestly say it's probably a good idea when you're in your undergraduate degree program and working on obtaining those prerequisites that you need for veterinary school to begin to develop good study habits then. It's really hard if you've kind of always been the type of person that's just kind of skimmed along and not really put effort to then suddenly go to a really high intense high level of commitment and study sort of program as a veterinary degree, medical degree, dental degree, whatever it may be. But once you get to veterinary school, what you're gonna find out is even if you are someone that is very studious and you are someone that does have a good program and a good method of how you learn, you may have to change that up a little bit. For example, you are going to be introduced to a lot of new terminology and a lot of different things that you're probably not gonna have any prior experience with. For me, when I took first year anatomy, something that really helped me was writing out all of the terms and definitions that I needed to learn for each unit. So writing out all of the names of the different muscles, 
all the different nerves, all the different bones, things like that. So that when it came time to then learn where those different parts were inside of the dog, the cat, I already had a word bank in my mind of words that I could pull from. So figure out how you study best. You know, I had some friends that flashcards were their thing. Other friends like to do study groups. I learned best by teaching or pretending to teach where I like write stuff up on the board. I like to read things out loud. Take time to figure out how you learn best. And then also if you figure out a study method or something that works for you in one course, understand that from one course to the next, you may have to use a different tactic and a different approach. Next piece of advice that I would give you is to ask for help when you need it. Normally in veterinary school, you're surrounded by a group of people that are also very similar to yourself. You know, you're all really hardworking, really studious people. And sometimes it can make you feel vulnerable to ask for help and to admit that, hey, I don't understand this or I don't know this as well. I guarantee if you don't understand something or you don't know something that there has to be somebody else in your class that also doesn't understand it as well. So number one, when your professor opens up time for you to raise your hand and ask questions, ask those questions. Um, go up to your professor after class, email them, call them, even reach out to your fellow peers and friends and say, hey, like, I'm not sure if I understand this concept that well. Do you understand it? Can you explain it to me? Sometimes having somebody else explain something to you or put it in a different light or show you how they learned can be really helpful. I would also say to reach out to your school's student support staff and the office for students. Um, at my school, we had an office where we could reach out to them and they would even connect you with a tutor or a peer or another veterinary school student who was at a higher level. So let's say you were a freshman, they would put you in contact with a junior or a sophomore that had recently been through the class that maybe you were having a little bit of difficulty with and they could take time to show you how they learned and even help you with figuring out a method that works best for you. Next piece of advice that I would give you is to not compare yourself to other people. In veterinary school, you are going to find that you are going to be in a class most likely with about a hundred other individuals that are exactly like you. These are all people from all over the country and even all over the world who were at the top of their class in undergrad. These are people that have, you know, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 4.0 students. People that have committed themselves to studies, committed themselves to becoming a veterinarian, and you're putting all of these perfectionists, all of these type A people, all into one space. So in a sense, it's kind of like you're competing against yourself. But with that, I wanna say it's not a competition. <laughs> do what you do best, learn how you do best, and at the end of the day, remember that a grade does not define who you are or how you do in comparison to your classmates also does not define who you are. I have classmates who've gone on to do all sorts of things and classmates that are in all different fields of life. It doesn't matter really where you start or how you kind of fall in the spectrum within your veterinary school class. If you have different goals and dreams that you want to do in veterinary medicine, you can absolutely do them and accomplish them. So don't waste your time comparing yourself to your other classmates. There's a reason why you were admitted into the class that you were. There's something special and unique that you bring to the table. The next piece of advice that I would give you is to enjoy your breaks and your times off. There's always that temptation to say, oh, well, I'm gonna study for that test or that quiz that I know that's coming up, or I'm gonna prepare for that next class that I know is coming up. I'm gonna get a jump start on reading. Don't, just don't. <laughs> give yourself the break that you deserve. Sleep, hang out with friends, hang out with family, eat, relax, do whatever it is that makes you happy. If you like going for hikes, bike rides, whatever it would be, take time to enjoy yourself when you have those different times off during the summer and during the year. Next piece of advice I would give you is to be patient with yourself. For me, when I first went off to vet school, it was my first time ever living on my own. I went away to college and I stayed in a dorm for my undergraduate degree program, but when I went away to veterinary school, it was my first time, you know, living on my own. Um, you know, having to go and do the grocery shopping, having to clean the house, having to do laundry, having to cook myself dinner, all those sorts of things. And then you add on top of that, having to learn and having to 
put in for a you know really challenging curriculum it can be a lot <laughs> and it can feel overwhelming at times so absolutely be patient with yourself i say this all the time still to this day and i said it all the time when i was in vet school when everyone thought it was hilarious but i would always say treat yourself take time you know even if it's something small like saying you know tonight i'm gonna take a time and i'm gonna watch my favorite show i'm going to you know get you know that favorite pint of ice cream that i like i'm going to you know treat myself to a new pair of jeans whatever it is that makes you happy and brings joy to yourself make sure to reward yourself and to treat yourself um a lot of times when i was in veterinary school when i would go through a really challenging week or you know a lot of exams and things like that on that friday night when i was done i would say okay i'm going to my favorite restaurant i'm getting to eat whatever i want and then i'm going to head back to my place and i'm just going to crash <laughs> like make sure to reward yourself for a job well done and also take time to take care of yourself next piece of advice i would give to you is to surround yourself with a support system there are so many times when I think about just different nights and different days that were very challenging when I was in school and I just wanted to throw in the towel. I wanted to give up. I was done. I thought, why in the world did I ever want to become a vet? <laughs> why am I doing this to myself? And I remember calling up um, different family members and talking to them on the phone and they were just so encouraging and saying like, no, like this was your dream. You're going to do it. You're going to make it. And it's so important that you have people in your life when you're going through this time that you can be vulnerable with and that you can just lay it all out on the table and have people that are going to cheer you on that are going to be in the grandstands of your life pushing and rooting for you to continue on this is also why it's important to make time for friends and family and to not close yourself off and box yourself off away from others and the last piece of advice that I have for you, and I would say arguably the most important, is to never, ever, ever give up. You, as I said before, you're in this class for a reason, you've persevered, you've worked so hard. Like I said, everyone is gonna have those days when they feel like they wanna quit, that they're done, that they're hard. When you feel like you did everything you could to prepare, and it just didn't work out the way you planned. Those are the days when it's even the more important to dig your heels in and to say, you know what, no, I'm gonna fight for this, I'm gonna push through. And I can honestly say being on the other side now and be out and practice and doing what I always dreamt of doing, of being a veterinarian, you can do it. There are so many others that have come before you that made it through, that persevered. If we can do it, you can do it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you relate to any of the advice that I give, if these are things that you learned while you're in veterinary school or even you're in vet school right now and you're seeing some of these things come up, let me know in the comments below. Um, I would love to hear from you guys and show some love and encouragement um, to your other friends out there on the web that are in vet school right now. Um, I know you can do it. Don't give up, okay? Um, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe. Um, it really does help out the channel. Um, leave a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye.